Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial. We got a lens AC tech drive made in the US and A. Murga! Freedom! Fuck yeah! And sadly, despite years of service, the thing shed its guts. <laughs> it went to work with pants on, came home with none. Supplies, supplies, supplies. Lens is a German company that's been around since 1947 doing industrial automation. In this day and age, this would these drives in particular are what would be considered minimum viable for industry. They're very cheap drives. They're mainly, they're, they're priced for system integrators to take and build other, they're, they're priced like a Lego brick, an industrial Lego brick. The, the margins on these are slim, 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 slim. So you kind of get what you pay for. You'll see these kind of drives in, in things like uh, big ass fans. They don't have the lens drive on them, but if you look at just look at it, you can tell in all the programming it is a lens drive, which uh, allows you to hack some of those. I won't tell you what you can do, but if you if you have a modicum of time to mess around with those lens drives on the big ass fans, you can do some interesting things. More chooch for your chotch. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're in like sitting in the first Mio Culpa right off the hop. We get the seven seg display and a little filter, what for making it look futuristic. Well, so the construction of the board ain't tea bag. We can see here that some engineer went crazy with the value engineering. <laughs> Doesn't even, uh, we screw right into the side of another PCB, three board component. This one soldered into the high voltage board. On the top side, we see that this was in a high vibration environment. Look at these little tactile switches here, wallered right out. Infineon, Sherman, brain box, little clock, some seven seg display. Very, very cost conscious design here. Even the contacts, tiny, tiny little contacts, which you can't even get in there and, and, and unless you got one of these fancy dancy tiny screwdrivers. Mmm, crusty. The only thing missing is the mothball smell. You ever smell mothballs? It's tough to get in there with your nose before they fly away. And that, ladies and germs, is a proper header. Avoid cabling at all costs. So, we have here the first clue as to, a well, potential clue, as to what happened to this drive. On the obverse, we got the T1, T2, T3. The T's are designate, uh, designant of motor leads and the L's are the inputs. What do we have here on one of the phases? Big old arcing and a sparking happened in there. So either they did a hot swap and uh, <laughs> somebody got a bit of a start or this thing was loose. And of course a loose connection means high resistance. High resistance means heat. Heat means no es bueno for electronicals. In my haste, my teenage prom night ebullience, I jumped the gun, pun intended. What we can do here, the easiest thing first to troubleshoot, of course, you always want to do the easiest thing first. And the easiest thing first, just grab your meter and check the diode packs on the input because there's a rectifying bridge on the input, of course, and check the diodes, the freewheel diodes of the IGBT bridge. And we check the output phases T1, T2, T3, or if you're Chairman U, V, and W, and we check the diode packs here and blown right out of her Lucas Oil Prince of Darkness style something let the smoke out just for tits and tickles on the input side here because you never know you might have two problems I know I do yeah <laughs> dead short so this, there ain't no going back from this, especially on a $200 drive. She's proper fucked. Here's the easy PIM. Fancy a PIMS? I think I would. Infineon module, made in Germany, of course, and it's got that same cracktacular surface of the moon look about the thermal transfer compound. Now, the odd thing about that is, if it's silicon-based, silicon, silicone lubricant, it doesn't like there's nothing to flash off there it's very stable so i'm wondering how it does that and this has a copper heat sink instead of a, a metalized or a chrome metalized type heat sink carefuling ah, 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 a clue 
blown right out of her look at that let's get the microscope out now this is the pad what burnt out still has notably one bond wire but no other bond wires so pixies get in but they can't get out burned right out of her let's uh let's consider another one that hasn't been damaged here's one of the five remaining of the initial six igbt's this appears to be the diode that would uh, allow for freewheeling when it's switching. And now I can't see because the Jesus phone. And intact here, we have the gate. You can see the gate off all on its own. And then wires going into the device itself. And bond wires coming out of the base of the device itself. So that is what fried. The IGBT itself fried, not the diodes which would indicate just a general lifetime failure. Overheated, uh, got tired, gave up the ghost. Ugh, the snot, what contains the smoke is just, I wonder how they make it so it never, it's always snot-like. Probably a pretty amazing material. Luckily, I'm not in California, so it won't give me cancer. That is what it looks like when doves cry and AC drives fry inside the life of a commodity part. Uh, it just gave up the ghost. It died of natural causes. And now we know. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.